This is the book of James, chapter 5, verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Verse 2. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory. Call Haloyim, La Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakras, Bukatam. Double honor to the apostles and elder, elders of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim around the core front. Around the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. Shalom to the Akwath and the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willing, this is an edifying video. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of the other nations, appearing like the other nations, but subscribing to this truth to you. I say Shalom. This is the brother Yahweh Sop out of the GMS Cleveland Church. A fellow servant coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And basically, um, I wanted to do a quick hit or a quick video on um, this article I had seen. Um, I think it was on Rudders. Um, basically, going into our economy or the these Americans' economy, because I don't consider myself an American. I'm an Israelite trapped in America. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so I thought that scripture in James would be sufficient to start off with because, you know, these rich men are going to howl when um, basically they lose all this money and this system has to be reset. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to bring out the article and Lord, come with some precepts and Lord willingly, this is edifying. This is um, out of Rudders. This is Business News, October 1st, 2020. It's dated 7.14 a.m. The author is David Henry, and it says, Big U.S. banks to report profit plunge as pandemic recession takes hold. It's New York Rudders. As big U.S. commercial banks close their books on the third quarter, because, you know, um, the way, um, you know, um, American um, economics are is structured each, the year is broken up into four quarters. You know what I'm saying? So usually... Um, you know, because of the pandemic, <laughs> you know, the economy took a hit. That's why they had to print all this funny money because of the fact, you know, you literally um, stop people from working. You know what I'm saying? And that's why the main reason why they had to actually push the stimulus package, because at the end, they, the government looks, pretty much functions off of taxing the citizens. But if the citizens aren't working, how are you going to tax them? So it's funny because they did this during um, that guy DJ Trump's slogan of making America great again. And for a moment, you have people thinking that he really made it great again because, you know, all these app based jobs that happened to turn up when he was president. But then in the same breath, basically, he's the president under his watch where this pandemic was actually, um, you know, it. it, 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 it the outbreak happened under his uh, administration. So no matter how much they're trying to make America great again, you can't, you know, um, constantly looking at it like you got certain states, you know, that's just now fully opened back up, but you got states that's shutting back down. On top of it, you got a lot of, like, um, certain industries where they're not allowing you to, uh, like, for instance, bars and restaurants. A uh, restaurant, I think, is still stay open late, but a bar, there they no longer, like, I remember back before all of this, you know, um, the restaurants used to close at 11. If it was a bar or restaurant or a bar and grill, the food would get stopped being served at 11 and the bars would stay open to like 2, 2.30. But now because of this, they're basically making the bars stay closed earlier. So if it's already a struggling economy and you're affecting people's livelihood with um how long they can stay open. How do you expect to actually recover from this? That's how you know it's set up and planned. Because these people ain't that stupid. You get what I'm saying? These people, you got to remember, it's groups of organizations and what do you call think tanks. It's groups of individuals that sit back and think about Like the Bilderberg meetings and the G, G, um, G10 summits and all that shit. All those are, are, are think tanks where they sit around and they... Basically, come up with ideas and come up with policy, and we're going to do this and do that. You know what I mean? 
And next year, you know, just be don't be amazed when you see some devastating shit. I mean, you know, Ricky Richie from Boston always mentions Agenda Twenty Twenty One, but I don't know if anybody ever takes the time to go actually research it. <laughs> next year is the year twenty one, two thousand twenty one. So, so lucky it up. Uh, not to digress. It says, as big U.S. commercial banks close their books on the third quarter, analysts expect them to report a thirty to sixty percent plunge in profits. On the year ago period due to the pandemic induced recession and near record low interest rate. So, right, they're not making as much as they normally do because the government had to, well, not the government, but, you know, the Fed that deals with, because the Fed, the Fed that deals with our monetary system doesn't actually, it's not an entity of the government. It's a private organization. And they had to lower interest rates because of the fact that, you know, people are struggling. So if banks aren't allowed to charge as much interest, you know what I mean? Like that affects a lot of different stuff. On top of the fact, like we coming into a season right now, you got all these major um, like holidays coming up, you know, these wicked ass pagan days. And, and, and basically a lot of people ain't got the income for that shit. You know what I mean? You know, for the last couple of years, people have been pulling away from as far as spending so much money on, you know, Christmas and uh, like the brother was saying, like he, he works in fast food industry, so he does a lot of deliveries. He was like, you know, 4th of July, he, he delivered to a lot of Jake's. But as far as Esau, he wasn't delivering to a lot of them. And then the ones he did deliver to, like they wasn't even like on the 4th of July. No, Salakia. He said he delivered more to Esau. And when he got there, they wasn't, they was just eating pizza. As opposed to when he would deliver to Jake or was going to Jake neighborhoods, he would see like majority of the Jakes, they was barbecue and shit like that. So basically when you take time to think about it, he was saying Esau didn't spend much money during that holiday while Jake went all out like usual and, you know, got fresh to death, bought all the liquor and, you know, strong drink and yay on and yeah, you know what I mean? And then, you know, uh, of course, bought all the food, you know, like I was working in, the, I was in this program and dude had just said that he was like, you know, he kind of broke from um, the holiday. Uh, you know what I mean? That's the beautiful thing. Like <laughs> I heard the elder Barack Allah mention one day, he's like, no, dumbass, you know, cause we all celebrate these, uh, you know, these wicked ass pagan holidays. So, but you know, people about to be struggling because like I said, this, um, you know, this, um, uh, Thanksgiving, and, um, Christmas, you know, and a lot of stores, actually look to make their profit for the year based on those holidays i i i believe walmart is going to be closed this um, thanksgiving they already talking about canceling halloween which halloween is also the same day you're gonna have that that blue solo well it's, a, it's supposed to be a second eclipse of the uh, of the month which you don't know what that is for real you know what i mean esau's not gonna tell you everything you know what i mean like Esau knows some shit, and Esau, like Esau the devil. So like it. Um, they, they, they say it in hints or whatnot, you know what I mean? That's why they call a lot of people sheeple, you know what I mean? You know, it's called double talk. That's why it's funny when people be thinking like, you know, growing up in, 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 the, in, in the ghetto, you know, you know how Jake could talk to one another in code. Thinking they outsmart Esau, but Esau been double talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, fuck you think the Masons do? Uh, it says a combination. Oh, that's nothing. It says that, that slump in third quarter net income comes even though leaders, Salakia, even though lenders are not going to make outsized provisions for expected loan losses as they did in the first and second quarters. And while capital markets and investment banking revenue is expected to be up for. Up from five to twenty percent, that won't be enough to make up for the decline in interest income from loans and securities. You have soft loan growth, and you're still, and you're still feeling the impact from aggressive Fed actions earlier this year," said analyst Jason Goldberg of Barclays, Citigroup Incorporated, CN, and Wells Fargo and Co. at WFCN, the third and fourth biggest U.S. banks by assets, respectively will report net income down by about 60% according to IBES analysts of survey data from Riven 2.
Corporation Bank N, which ranks first and second in assets, respectively, are expected to show profits down about 30%. Investment banks Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated and Morgan Stanley, which are befitting from being more concentrated in the business capital markets, are expected to report more modest profit declines of about 5 to 10 percent. JP Morgan and Citigroup will kick off the third quarter bank earnings season on October 13th. Pandemic driven lockdowns have put tens of millions of Americans out of work and plunged the U.S. into a recession. So, this is the first, well, you know, they bet had said we was in a recession. I, I was, I didn't want to lie. I had to think about it. But that's proof that we're in a recession. U.S. outpost, so like it, U.S. output is forecast to fall 3.7% in 2020. The Federal Reserve said here last month, that is not as bad as fear earlier in June, allowing banks to hold off on adding to their loss reserves. At an online Barclays investor conference last month, bank executives and consumers have paid down credit card debt during the recession and businesses have shunned bank loans. Big companies have instead been able to raise cash via the bond markets, which are being propped up by the feds. Consumer loans at large U.S. banks were also down about 3% in the quarter from a year earlier, according to Fed data. As markets plunged in March, the central bank cut overnight interest rates to near zero and began a massive campaign to buy securities. So basically, and, and, and that's why they said like a lot of these banks was buying up a lot of like, because, you know, all these people basically, like I said, a lot of businesses shut down or went into debt and had to sell. And a lot of them banks bought that shit up. That's why they said the rich got richer throughout this pandemic. As uh, it says, those purchases and surges and savings from worried customers have flooded banks with more deposits than they can lend or risk putting into longer term security. And it shows you something too that how everything is manipulated with the stock market and everything. Because after everything plunged and you seeing they had to print all this money, yet still you had people that never invested before in the stock markets that went and put money in the stock market. Which that's like for instance. Like, say for instance, I'm going to do a nigga carnal example or some a nigga carnal example. Say for instance, you was a drug man and the dude that you get your drugs from, this nigga all of a sudden get raided or he get picked up by the police or the feds or something. And then this nigga come out like a month later, but he got it cheaper than he had it before. Like, who would really still continue to fuck with this guy? But you got some dumbass two third people that would like, oh no, oh yeah. But what I'm saying is, I mean, you know, you supposed to be circumspect in everything. I mean, you got two third niggas that's in the street that try to watch what their surroundings is and think about it and analytically think. So why, if the country just literally was broke to the point they had to basically go get loaned. And it, that's the funniest part to show you how stupid people are. They're like, oh, well, the government could just print money. How can they just print money? They had to borrow the money. That's how it's proven that it's not a part of the government. They just put federal so you could believe it's part of the government. <laughs> it's a, uh, those purchases and surges and savings from worried customers have flooded banks with more deposits than they can lend or risk putting into longer term securities. Stuff with cash. Bank net interest margins, the spread between them, and, and they steal stuff from cash because, you know, they basically bailed out all these banks when they actually did the stimulus, uh, you know, package. You know, it's basically a bailout for all the big corporations and the banks. And they tell people, like, I, I was talking to a dumbass two-third. He up there like, you know how many different kind of loan programs it is for people that was affected, they got business by COVID. Then if that's the case, why so many fucking businesses closing? Do you know how hard and how much red tape it is to be approved for one of them? Because you got to remember, the bank may, the bank has money. They, they, they got all bailed up, but they're not loaning. They, they said it's more difficult now to get a bank loan than it was then or a, a, bank, a housing loan. You got motherfuckers talking about trying to buy a house in a situation where you, you got things called bubbles. You get what I'm saying? So for you to buy a house in a, in a time where motherfuckers barely guarantee, and to show you how cold this shit is for real, Yet and still, though, none of these corporations give a fuck. They still want their money. You know, I had a light bill. You know what I'm saying? The light bill only like $100. These motherfuckers sent that shit to a fucking um, 
a creditor, a, a, a third party collector. I'm like, damn, now mind you, this is all during the pandemic. So that, and that's going to show you how, so if, 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 if this is the America's attitude, why would you try to buy a house? You know, I remember my father saying that, you know what I mean, years ago. He's like, well, you got good credit. You had a house. You go get a house. He's like, no, I ain't buying no house. I'm like, well, damn, because he knew this shit was going to happen. Stuff with cash, bank net interest margins, the spread between their cost of money and what. And that was like years ago, though. That was like 2008, I think. Stuff with cash, bank net interest margins, the spread between their cost of their money and what they earn on loans and securities fell to their lowest levels in 35 years in the second quarter, according to um, research by Golden Sachs. So the whole purpose of the, this article was basically uh, a lot of banks um, have to buy because they all do the, they financial reports every quarter at the end of each quarter. You know what I'm saying? A lot of banks, a lot of these lenders, because uh, like I said, if the economy this is going to prove to you that how dead the economy is. That's why you got so many people focused on trying to get a second stimulus. When when you take time to think about it, the, the stimulus didn't really do anything. The stimulus, majority of the people that get the stimulus had to use it to pay back rent or, or you know what I mean? You might got a blunt out of the shit and a pair of shoes. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, $1,200 isn't very much money. I mean, you really take the time to actually put it in perspective. Yeah, twelve hundred dollars to a person that ain't had no money in a long time could be a lot of money. But twelve hundred dollars ain't a lot of fucking money. You got phones that cost more than the twelve hundred dollars. So, so lucky, um, let me bring out some scriptures. This is the book of Second um, Timothy, chapter three, beginning at verse one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And that's the point that I want to get. You know, um, I could have kept going, but the point is we living in the last days and we're living in perilous times. When you go into the word perilous, it's G5467. Um, dangerous, right? Because at the end of the day, and when you got all these people out of work and all these people that can't feed, you know, I was watching this movie. Um, it says it comes at night. And, you know, uh, it was deep. It was more of a psychological thriller. It's on Netflix, but it didn't come out on Netflix. But it was funny at the time when Netflix has this on there. Because I, you know, I'll be watching Netflix sometimes and this wasn't just on there. But when you watch the movie, it was like literally, it's like one guy was trying to save his household and the other guy was trying to save his household. And they both was leery on dealing with each with each other. And they both was trying to take care of their families. But they like, well, fuck it. We're gonna go ahead and decide to try and like work together. But it wasn't any kind of monster outside of it. I mean, it was like some kind of disease that was killing people. But the point is, it was humans that was the biggest monsters. Like, they got to plotting on each other. Like, and that's how it's going to get when this shit go down. Like, America's not taught. You're not taught for real to literally uh, help. That's why you, you'll you see a, a, a person fucked up outside, homeless. And a person, nine times ten, more likely be to move past them than... Um, then, then, or laughed at him, then try to help him. You know, the thing is, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, I've been homeless. I've had people, I've had, it tells you in scripture, if your ways please the Lord, then he'll have your enemies be at peace with you. So I've got fed by Esau. But at the same time, I also know that that's all the will of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I just brought out a scripture. You know what I'm saying? The, the Lord can feed you through your enemies. Like, real talk. But also, you got to remember, through this pandemic, they said some of the most hardest hit people was, uh, um, people that literally uh, was homeless. Them soup kitchens shut down. How do you think they survived? Now, I'm sure it was some spot, you know, a lot of places was giving them like, instead of you coming in to sit, they was putting in bag lunches and shit. But one point is, a lot of soup kitchens had shut down. So it was just amazing to me how the Lord going to do it. So that's how, people who wasn't up there like, oh shit, we still got to feed these people because that's the right thing to do. No, they was like, fuck you. It's about me and mine. And that's how it's going to get, the The more and more things get more and more um, severe, the more and more people going to be about their households and fuck yours. Just like the movie The Purge, you know what I mean? Or, 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 or um, what's that, The Road? Um, skip into um, the book of Jer uh, Salaki, the book of Isaiah. The 
This is the book of Isaiah chapter 14. I'm going to start at verse um, I'm going to start at verse 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. And the king of Babylon is these Edomites who rule Babylon. You know what I mean? Who controls policy in Babylon? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you might have a few jakes that sprinkle throughout the Senate and Congress and have prominent positions in their government, but they don't look at themselves like Jake no more. That's why you got that bitch uh, that's under Bush. Um, what's her name? The bitch that, uh, damn, that T.I. and all them was, was talking about that's part of, um, not Bush, part of um, Trump's administration that's married to the Candace Owens. Like, as black as this nigga is, she married to Edomite. She don't think she is no Jake no more. She thinks she a uh, Edomite. And that's a, just like Kamala Harris. You got people breaking their neck to vote for Kamala Harris. You know, this bitch so ignorant. You know, her mother, I believe, is a so-called white woman. Her daddy is a Jamaican, a Benjamite. And she made a statement talking to the people on the breakfast clubs that faggot-ass nigga Charlemagne... I don't call him the God. Charlemagne the, the fag. <laughs> that nigga sitting up here. You know, you can see the agendas all being pushed. Like when he was speaking to fucking Biden and Biden sitting up there like, you ain't black if you don't vote for me. And this dude stood up there and act like he didn't hear it. Like, you know how disrespectful some shit like that? You not black, but I'm not black if I, I mean, we know black is just a byword, but using their terminology, he said, you not black if you don't vote for me, but you're not black either. So I'm not even what, <laughs> I mean, so, did some of the shit these people say, like, man, it says, uh, Isaiah 14 and 5, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. And the oppressor is Esau, Edom, and the golden city is AKA America, which is known as Babylon, the great in the scriptures. And this place is ceasing. You get what I'm saying? Like, you can clearly see. And people, like, they play like they don't hear. The, you got some people that's really lost. But people, even a nigga through the spirit, because the Lord, it tells you that he going to put his spirit on everything. It tells you in scripture, even a nigga that can't get this at all is going to look up and see the most high send his son back. And that's when everybody going to get it. You get what I'm saying? At the end of the day, in your spirit, nigga or not, you feel something ain't right. That's just like with that vaccine. You know, you're going to have a lot of people that's going to take it out of necessity, out of disbelief, out of, you know, the Lord just set them up and left them blinded to just be fucking used to get the vaccine and the chip. But you got most people. To, I know a dude right now working at a hospital that telling me, like, I know there's something ain't right about it. So I like to give him some information, but I still think he's going to take the vaccine. He work at a hospital. He a frontline worker. He's going to be mandated to take that bitch. Then it's going to be all the people that's been working or going to be working during the shit after the second lockdown. And then it's going to be all you so-called niggas. Because <laughs> if you're not aware, your, your president or they president, however you want to phrase it, he just ain't my fucking president. You know, I got one king, the most high, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh my big brother. You know. Yahweh the Father and my big brother Yahweh Shah, my Lord and Savior. Those are my king. So at the end of the day, but like like I say, at the end of the day, that man made a statement. He said literally that you know so-called blacks and Hispanics should take it first. Like, how the fuck did you just literally remind you? It started with it was a China, China disease. It went from people shunning, shunning Moab to back to looking at niggas. Like, oh yeah, nigga. That show you how that's really a curse. I literally watched it. I watched these Chinese Asian Moabite stores be shut down because motherfuckers wasn't dealing with them. And now they back open like as if like nothing happened. That's how you know this is witchcraft, man. It says, the Lord have broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. And you seeing the power here being broken now. You got these other nations, these, you know, Nation that's looked at as weak, that's literally like a North Korea. Years ago, North Korea wouldn't have been like, fuck you to America. They like literally in your face, fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, and at the end of the day, they, they, they staff is broken because look at, like America's looked at it as like a joke. You know what I mean? Like this was the once place that everybody in the world would dream to get to. 
This was the one place, if you go figure it out, if you had a passport from America, you like with certain countries, you might have to go through uh, different processes to actually get or gain entry. America, because you just had an American passport, you was American, you bypassed all that. Because of COVID, they literally like, they don't even want you in the, their countries. The third world countries that was looked at as like, all oh, these cesspools, these shitholes, now they look at America like the shithole. And we, when you take time to think about it, yeah, because America is America the Great, remember? It's funny. When you take the time to think about it, it America's called America the Great, and Babylon is called Babylon the Great. <laughs> uh, let me get this second Ezra. Because, like I said, these are the times we're about to come in. Uh, I think it's 15. And, um, That's the spirit, because I was just talking about how um, they going, you know, Americans trying to get into other countries, you know, and basically because of, we lead the nation in the, well, we lead the nations in the COVID cases, they don't want us in there. But you seeing that as well as in America, like certain cities, like how New York was doing or how Florida was doing it, basically they wasn't letting you just come into their city. You had a quarantine. This is Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 17. No, I'm going to start up. I'm going to start at 14, 2 Ezra 15 and 14. Woe to the world, woe many destruction, destruction to the world and them that dwell with the, and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw up nigh, meaning it's coming near. You know, like I say, you got these militia groups, these white militia groups talking about it don't matter because at the end of the day, if Biden win, it's going to be an uh, uprising. If Trump win, it's going to be an uprising. You got these, uh, you got Trump literally wouldn't even... Uh, Come against white supremacy. <laughs> but you got stupid ass niggas that's up on his team that, that that was part of his party. That's just like that bitch on Amarosa. You did whatever you did, probably sucked his dick or whatever the fuck you did to get a position in his cabinet. And then she she ain't no dumb bitch because she recorded everything he was saying. And guess what they did to show you how much power she ain't got? They let that shit go away. They swept that shit under the rug. She should have been able to write like three books on this shit. Yet still, they're like, not, it don't even matter. People ain't even concerned with it. You're a nigga woman. Ha, ha, ha. It says, for the sword and their destruction draw of nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. And you're seeing that now. That's why you got the, these stupid-ass people that's up under this Black Lives Matter when you got an organization called Black Lives Matter, but then when you go into certain cities, it's all... Richie from Boston said it. I, I think he said he was in Colorado. He was in some state, and he was like, literally, you seeing the Black Lives Matter signs, but he was like... He see all um, white women. He like, what the fuck? He's like, he find an eye. You know what I mean? So he notices something going on. Like literally, and that's how stupid Jake is. They use you as a scapegoat because them white women ain't going to get touched when it come down to, um, it's going to be like a Rosewood. You know what I'm saying? If you ever see the movie Rosewood, this white bitch cheating on her husband with another fucking Edomite and did basically, literally say Jake raped her and they went, and that's based on a true story. These people forgot about these things, though. It says, for there shall be sedition among men. And sedition is mean and basically uprising. And you got Esau uprising against Esau. They literally said Antifa and Black Lives Matter, because basically that's who's supposed to be behind Biden. That's how you know this shit over with. You know what I mean? Because, like I said, basically Black Lives Matter and Antifa feel some kind of way about how the government is being run out. Trump is in office. That's why Trump making the threats he's making. So, they already riding. If Trump win again, you don't think they're going to turn up even more? And then you got Trump supporters that's like the Proud Boys and, you know, all these neo-Nazi fucking American militias and all that. You know, these so-called, they call them right wing. <laughs> and Black Lives Matter is supposed to be left wing. You know what I mean? When this is all like, this is all like purposely set up from the elite and, you know, these puppet masters and shit. And the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So basically, literally, this is basically, it's literally going to be bad either way. Like, it's a video floating around on YouTube where they say that. They, they, they brought the news literally into the woods, and they like, we just sitting back waiting. You know what I mean? Because if Biden win, it's going to be issues, and if Trump win, it's going to be issues. Y'all about to see a real-life purge. It says, for there shall be sedition among men, invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. 
So at the end of the day, they not about to regard the authority. You got Black Lives Matter not a th regarding the authorities. What just happened? They said them gangs literally said if if, if Jake keep on getting shot, they're going to start shooting at the police. What happened in L.A.? I think like two policemen got shot in the face and shit. Like this shit going to be. So they're not regarding their king. They're not regarding Trump. They're not regarding these governors. Like, wait, wait till this second lockdown when they make you about to make everybody locked down. And then the thing is, it's going to be way worse this time because they already passed the legislation saying, well, if you don't do this, well, we got the right to do this. So all that shit, when they let them get away with, oh, you out and about and you ain't got no paperwork showing. You know, do you know where this shit go back? You had, when I was working, <laughs> when they locked the shit down, they gave me a piece of paper to have on my way to work. So if I got stopped, like back in the day in Nazi Germany, you had to show your papers. Do you realize what, and you got stupid ass people talking about, ain't nothing going on? Like literally I had to have a, that's what they had in Nazi Germany. And if you didn't have them papers and they thought you was a fucking Jew, I, <laughs> uh, it's a lock here. It says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able to. And basically, like I said, New York and Florida was doing that. Like I said, they was making you quarantine. Or if you want quarantine, they weren't even letting you come in there. And Who's to say how many people went up there and literally they probably didn't get heard from? Come on, it's videos on YouTube where they was coming just snatching motherfuckers up, not identifying themselves or nothing. It says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. <laughs> And you know, all especially these niggas that think they super tough, these He-Man ass niggas, these 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 ghetto boys. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end they like as much as I done seen in my life, you ain't gonna be ready for this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why it talks about you gonna have to be um like relying on something more besides yourself. You know what I mean? Like you got even I've seen niggas that think they tough that like say at the end of the day, in a society that's actually like how America got you believing it's supposed to be, when bad things happen. A nigga still can call 911. You know what I'm saying? When it ain't no 911, when the people that you calling to protect you is the ones doing it, what the fuck you gonna do then? It says, uh, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread for great tribulation. And that lack of bread is that famine that's coming. And like I said, if you got a smartphone, instead of listening to some dumb shit or watching some like one of them stupid ass like comedy shows on, on YouTube, you better go look some of this shit up. It's it, it's so many news outlets talking about they think it's a famine coming and want to know why? Because literally during the summertime, they was telling you how you had all these farmers being made to euthanize all the, the animals. So, you know what I mean? So, like I said, I said in the last couple of videos, I'm going to say it one more time. At the end of the day, you know how America's going to get down when you're locked down again or when it comes down to my household over yours. Come on, this is the same sh a place where Black Friday motherfuckers get into fights over a TV. So how much more so, how many people going to get killed when it comes down to a can of beans and rice? Like like the one brother, uh, Elder Barack Allah said, he said, motherfucker going to take... I forgot who said it. They said they're going to take that can and beat you to death with that bitch. <laughs> and then try to open them and eat that shit and die. Because <laughs> it's like 12 years old. Because <laughs> canned food is the worst food to ever eat. If you're going to preserve something, you don't preserve it in a can. You put it in a glass. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong. You can get you through some shit. But they, that shit is death. That's just like with all these GMO, this seedless food. That food ain't alive. You eating something that this motherfucker, and that's why we call this motherfucker the devil. We eating food that ain't real food. Uh, let me get another scripture. This is the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter thirty-six. We'll start at verse. We'll start at verse six. It's this is Isaiah 36 and 6. Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. And that's Jake. Even after this man showing you, these people showing you how much they the devil, you got people still trusting in this place. You still got people trusting that Donald Trump is going to make America great again. This motherfucker supposedly <laughs> is in the hospital. He can't even help himself. It says, lo, thou... Salaki, lo thou 
Thou trust is in the staff that this broken reed on Egypt. And when you go into the word Egypt is Mizraim or Mazarayim. Um, Mazar, Maz, Mazar, I'm butchering it. But Mizraim is the actual name of Egypt. Egypt is a Greek name for Mizraim. You know, because when you go on, you know, Greeks had a certain way they said shit. That's why when you read in the scriptures, you got to go and learn the Greek. You know what I mean? I ain't no Greek scholar, but I, I I know Egypt is a Greek name. That's why, like, when you go into, like, um, the Apocrypha, you know, um, Ezra, and when you get Ezra's, Ezra's is a, the Greek name, a, the Greek way of saying Ezra. So, you know, uh, anyhow, uh, it says, Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. And this place, this modern day Egypt, because when you go into, like I said, Egypt or Mizraim, it means double straits, bondage, the house of bondage. So, you know, it's a punishment. And America, even though these people done brainwashed a lot of you, Jay, because they thinking you, but, 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 but basically this year should have showed you without a doubt that you don't fit in the society, no matter where the fuck your lot is in the society. You got actual famous people that literally go on YouTube and cuss Esau out. And let you, John Sally, the brother kept on bringing up John Sally yesterday. John Sally is awake to the truth, though. You know, John Sally done actually, brothers have actually met John Sally. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is, you got entertainers that realize, you know, I, I believe it was Mayweather that said, with all the money I got, I'm still looked at like a nigga to these crackers. So at the end of the day, if 2020 ain't show you nothing, to show you that this, you're not really a part of the society. Because... Out of 2020, the most people that got killed is you so-called niggas. You so-called black people. You so-called black men. But then they had a couple black women. You know what I'm saying? Like that Breonna Taylor to show you the, the uh, what's the word? The hypocrisy of this fucking devil. This man broke into this woman's house, killed her. Pay, they paid this woman's family. And guess what? They still let the officers off. And guess what? They still trying to link some kind of way to make it seem like she was wrong. So how the fuck is this your rest? It says, Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. And that piercing is going into that, that, that chip. You know, when you go into that karagman, that's a piercing or etching or a scratch. Or, or they going to actually pierce your flesh to give you that... that, that um. That chip, and, and that's deep because I just got to understand the scripture today. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. And, you know, once again, that's the spirit because, you know, uh, um, Donald Trump is um, America's pharaoh. And you got a lot of motherfuckers that trust in him. Do you think he's going to make America great again? They love him because he gave him $1,200, which is a loan. He didn't give you shit. They loaned you that. That's how shrewd these motherfuckers is. They loaned you something you needed. <laughs> yeah. They tell you in the book of Jeremiah, uh, curses the man that trusts the man. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter uh, 17, verse 5. It say, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, shall curse be the man that trusts the man. So you people that's waiting on Donald Trump and believing in Trump and trusting in Trump is, is a fucking fool. Because this man, like I say, he can't even help himself. They got him quarantined, supposedly. This is book of Psalms 118 and 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord, Yahweh, while Yahweh shot, than to put confidence in princes. So you trusting in Donald J. Trump or any of these other fucking Edomites or shit, these fucking two-third Jake-ass niggas that done sold their spirit and soul to Satan. You trusting in them to actually be able to tell you what to do when... The main thing is that as an Israelite is to come back to the law, statutes, commandments. You know, the brother brought out something that was so deep to me recently when we was at the last sit down. He said, because of the curses, we it tells you in scripture that we were forced to go to our oppressor for the one of all things. I live in a government building. I had no means to get off the street until I got in this building. You know what I mean? I've had to rely on food stamps. I had to go to this man for one of all things. But now look at this system. It's falling apart. So the Lord made us go rely on this devil to, for the one of all things to actually live. And now he's taking their power away because they could barely take care of themselves. So now he's telling you to come back to him. 
But how many people really gonna do that? You this, this generation is, is is a generation um, with a lack of faith. They don't believe in the Most High. You got people believing themselves, but you can't even fucking feed yourself. <laughs> the fuck. This is the book of Revelations. I'm gonna end the lesson with this. You can't even feed your fucking self. You relying on food stamps and whatever the fuck this government give you, but you this king and shit like that. This is the book of Revelations. Chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and it is become the habitation of the devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine and the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are of wax rich from the Osalaki, uh, have wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And that's, you know what I mean, like like with China. You know, China has become a very wealthy nation actually producing the products that you Americans love to buy. Because Americans don't produce anything no more. You know what I mean? And, and, and show you how heathens think. When you really go look at China, China produce so much shit. They they weather, their, their atmosphere, their, their air over there so bad. Motherfuckers was wearing masks before the, before the COVID. So just show you just like how Esau do. Like this motherfucker will pollute the water to sell you a bottle of water. That's the heathen mindset. Because the scriptures tell you on the way to govern the world. You're not supposed to just constantly produce without letting the land rest. The land is alive. You know what I mean? So you're supposed to let the land rest. Just like a chicken. A chicken ain't supposed to lay 100 fucking 50 eggs. you supposed to, just like with a, a part of land. Gad knew how to cultivate the land, and then move on to another piece of land and cultivate that land while that land healed. Esau and the heathens don't know how to actually take care of the earth. And that's why the scriptures tell you how to take care of the earth. You know, how you have a Shabbat, a rest day for yourself, the land is supposed to have a rest year. It's supposed to be a whole year of rest for the land. I'm going to skip to verse 21. No, I'm a, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, this is Revelation 18 and 19. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city. What is that great city? America, aka Babylon the Great, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she made desolate. And a lot of America's made a lot of countries great. Once again, hence when I was bringing up with China. But this is going into, in that one hour, made desolate that's when the nuclear missiles when the other nations turn their arsenals their icbms their nuclear missiles um towards this place and destroy it it says rejoice over her thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for yahweh have avenged you on her because at the end of the day this place has committed so many atrocities against our people like I say even the two-thirds is getting killed left and right i mean like we even a, a man in the truth watching a, a, a two-third that's not in his right mind gets offended and upset about watching them people get killed because of the fact they still Israelites. It said, verse 21, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, thus with violence, say Salakia, thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And that's coming. Like I said, at the end, of the day, you about to see the devil that's spoken of in Revelations, the lamb that spoke as a dragon. You about to see this place that you think is so loving and kind and you know what I mean? Watch how these people. And the funniest part is, like I said, everybody got a fucking phone right now. You're required to. They don't use landlines like that no more. They're making you use cell phones so they can monitor everything. So that means there's no excuse. She even government fucking phones allow you to use YouTube. Come on, it's so many videos that circulate on YouTube showing during that last lockdown how they was beating the dog shit out of people. So yeah, for you foolish ass people that don't want to wake up, may you be destroyed. But for those that, you know, you know, of the hopeful elect that hear this message and it lightweight moves with your spirit, I pray that you come to back to the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah to you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, Seminole Indians, West Indians, and Haitians. The true Israelites, I pray that you come back because that's the only thing that will save you with the um save you with the times that's coming. 
And with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory. Call Halayim La Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rachakabes Rakatam. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutation to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and sincerity, risking their lives and the freedom to do so. Shalom to the Akwath and the Akim out there listening and learning. Learn willingly. It was an edifying lesson. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. And the land of the other nations appearing like the other nations was subscribing to the truth. To you, I say Shalom. Until next time, Lord willingly, I'm able to come with another lesson. Shalom, Shalom, and Mawath Labba Shalom.